Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a preview for the Farmer's Insurance Open. Before we get into the video, I want to go over a couple things. One, I always, I try to do this in every video, but it would be beneficial if you watch this at a higher speed. So watch it at 1.5 times speed, maybe 1.75 up to you. In order to do that, if you're on the desktop computer, there's a gear icon right here, right below my finger, or somewhere close to here. Um, Go ahead, click that, go to playback speed, play it at 1.5, 1.75. You're gonna get through the video much faster. It'll be clean still. It won't be difficult to follow. If you're on mobile, there's a vertical ellipses that's up top there. Just go ahead, click that while you're watching this. There should be a playback speed option there. Again, 1.5. Um, sorry, this is coming out a little late. It's not super late, like, you know, 10 p.m might be that it might be close to that for you guys on the east coast but i work two other jobs other than doing this so yesterday i, I got requested to uh work the second job that's a contracted position so i can work whenever um and i just thought yeah maybe so went ahead and worked like five hours five six hours got me to 11 at night really couldn't work on any of this so i had a lot of it done monday wish i could have got it out monday um i do want to ask you guys would you prefer me just do a straight up stats you know go over all the stats and not do any lineup construction like in one video and then split it off and do lineup construction in a second video um would you rather not see lineup construction i'm i'm cool with whatever you guys think or whatever you guys prefer uh because if we just went through stats and stuff like that the video would probably end in 25 to 30 minutes um maybe even less but the other thing i also want to to point out there are timestamps in this uh in the description below go ahead click on those timestamps to get to where you want to listen to i get them like real close to when they start and most of those those sections aren't going to be uh very long and i can go ahead and show you what those are going to be so uh throw up the show index Go over course information, course history, recent form, swing stats, grass stats, and lineup construction. Um, I will also bring up uh, some notable information on golfers during the lineup construction because I, I do have some interesting things to talk about Tiger and Ricky. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit about Jordan Spieth and a couple, uh, and, and Jason Day. So once we get there, we'll go over that stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and get into the course information right now. We're playing at two courses for just Thursday, Friday's round. Torrey Pines South, Torrey Pines North. Uh, should be no surprise there. This tournament has host, or this golf course has hosted this tournament for years, several years that is. Um, Torrey Pines North is the easier of the two courses. If you're playing showdown slates, it's been kind of a widespread um, advice, like people giving advice to to target players in the North Course. But the winner last year, Justin Rose, I think either in the in the second round, I think he shot a 66. Um, that or the third round. So it's doable. Low scores are doable at the south course. Don't just target golfers at the north course. Um, but I would say, look, if you have this data available, look at bent grass golfers at the north course, you know, or golfers that are good on bent grass because that's what their greens are comprised of. Look at golfers who are good at POA, for the south course for those showdown slates that is and especially for torrey pine south look for driving accuracy driving distance just overall tee to green because that's probably going to matter quite a bit at at torrey i think that's that's my favorite stat to look at you know for swing stats i think that's definitely going to be a because it, it encompasses all of the shots gain metrics whether it's around the green putting uh, approach off the tee all that good stuff um, and then my second favorite stat would be off the tee if it wasn't for just driving accuracy in general. So look at those stats, co combine them with the grass stats. You should find decent play plays for the north and the south during the showdown slates. Um, again, Torrey Pines, very long golf course. One of the longest, uh, the south one, the south course that is, one of the longest on tour. Um, when we get into the, the uh, course information, which I'm, actually I'm going to just, we're already in the course information, but what I'm going to pull up, um, <clears throat> I'll get into the spreadsheet, but let's go ahead and look at the results year to year. So Justin Rose 
did really well last year. 21 under. I mean, the, all the scores were pretty low. But if we look at 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, like they're hovering around 10 under. Scott Stallings uh, in 2014 was nine. Tiger 14. Like it's going to be kind of a high scoring tournament. I, I mean, this is only going to be repeatable. The weather's really good. But yeah, Justin Rose was pretty, um, I wouldn't say unstoppable, but he had a lot of great rounds last year. If you go and look at the, the 2019 leaderboard, pretty uh, fantastic tournament for him. But if we go ahead and get back into the course information, now we'll go over that. Um, I have it sorted by golfers who are playing this week, as well as their average finishing position over the last seven years. Um, Rory McIlroy's up at top. He's played it once and was fifth. That was last year. Really difficult to gauge. I think he's, I mean, put it this way. I think he's going to finish top 10. If he's going to, I don't know if he's going to win the tournament or not. At his price point, once we get into the lineup construction, you're going to see it's pretty expensive. I'm not sure exactly uh, how many lineups I want to play of him, but he is one of my favorites for this week. Ryan Palmer is right behind him. He's played the last two years, 13th last year and second the year before. Now, Ryan Palmer uh, is a golfer that I do like here, but we also have to remember the Sony Open. This is one of those things in golf, you know, golf takes all of your mental strength. In any of the other sports that you play, you can use your physical aggression and just, you know, get over a a mind blip basically like if you're if you're slow or you just can't think of things properly or whatever not saying you won't make mistakes but you can usually use your physical aggression to get through it you can't do that in golf will ryan palmer's i wouldn't say collapse at hole 18 but re really it was his ridicule that he got for hole 18 is that going to play a, a factor in his psychology he could come out just guns blazing and, and just tear up this golf course it's worth it, and at his price point, it's really interesting. I think he's $8,000. I'm not sure how much I want to play of him, but when we get into lineup construction, you're going to see he's going to fit the mold of golfer we want. Um, John Rahm, other than his 29th place, would have the best uh, course history here. The 29th. I mean, 2017, I think he just he got hot at the right time. One, I mean, that's when he first came on tour, did really well. 2019 or I should say 2018, I don't know exactly what happened, but um, I think a little, I think that's when he was like, he got really heated on the golf course and couldn't control his emotions basically. So he's kind of a hothead. Um, I like John Rahm this week. That's, that's essentially what I'm getting at. Lonto Griffin uh, only played it once. Good course history. Tony Finau, good course history. Probably not for the price that he is. So I think he's 9,200. A sixth place in 2018, a, a fourth place in 2017. Those are good for his price point. The 13th, 18th, 24th, maybe not so much. Um, and he looked pretty good last week. He's going to be a play. I, I'm going to play him. I'm not, I'm not saying avoid him. I'm just, you know, word to caution. Not sure exactly how much of him I want to play. Or that I want to, you know, advise. So I'd I'd hold hold on that. Uh I'm not gonna talk about Sepp Strock or Doug Gim. Gary Woodland, great course history. Uh let's go ahead and take out the 45. So you'd have 16, which just bumps him up into the next position. Still pretty good. Um I can't remember what his price point. I think he's in the nines, maybe just a little below. I'm not sure if I'm going to play a lot of Gary Woodland. He is a golfer that I do like. Uh, Bubba Watson, interesting not to see him um, here that often. I thought this was a course that he liked to play. Here is a good golfer. And I said I would talk about lineup construction, but I'm going to talk about Jason Day right now. Jason Day, I think, was just battling a cold. Um, I think he's talked about how tender his back is. So... <laughs> He has had back issues for the last how many years? Do we trust him to play well? He got fifth here last year. He won it the year before. Two missed cuts. Take the two missed cuts out. 3.6 in five tournaments. Like, that's pretty remarkable. 
Um, and I don't have the information why he missed the cut in 2017, 2016. I wasn't sure if he was battling anything. Like, I just don't know. So Jason Day is, I don't know. I think at his price, any of these fit, any of these positions are going to be just fine. Finishing positions, that is. Um, the other notable guys is Brant Snedeker. If we take out his 62, uh, no, 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 no. We'll keep that there. Take out his 85, which is a missed cut. 23, pretty good. For his price, it's, it's going to be remarkable. It's going to be fantastic. I think he's going to be a good... Um, okay. Why can't I get that back? Okay. Ooh. Let's go. Whatever. Okay. So that's all I'm going to go over with course history. Let's go ahead and get into the recent form. Um, now, I talk about this every single week. For the last three weeks, that is. So not every single week. These are really the only tournaments that you should concern yourself with. This was seven weeks before that tournament. So we're looking at 10 weeks ago and on for this information. I personally don't like to look at anything further than seven weeks. Seven weeks is my threshold. That's what, I, I mean, that's nearly two months, pretty darn close to two months. I suppose this would be the, the well, the fourth week or the eighth week, I should say, in that um, time frame that I'm talking about. So I, I'm not like, obviously Rory's first place recent form average is because he's only played one tournament. And that was like 13 weeks ago at the HSBC. Um, I'm not going to really use that as his recent form, although it looks nice. I'm, I'm leaving all this information here because I have it all populated going all the way back. Because when I first started doing these spreadsheets, I didn't even think about it. I just entered that information. It's still a good uh, point of reference whenever we go through all these spreadsheets. That's why I still have it up. So let's go ahead and go into the 2019 and go all the way back. Every one of these spreadsheets is sorted by the finishing position of that year's tournament. So obviously Justin Rose won it last year. We do see the optimal lineup in the $5 uh, GPP winning lineup over here with the, with the price points. So again, we've been talking about it every year, or not every year, but so far, the last couple tournaments that we played, the winning lineup is using all the salary. Um, obviously, the optimal lineup here, minus $200 from max salary. It's worth thinking about. Uh, really, what I want you guys to focus on is looking at the course history last year's result and last week's result because we will be going over the last year's result last week result in kind of a bucket combination piece uh, but look at the course history now i have it color coded green to red dark red dark red's bad dark red is miscuts uh, light red you know 40 to 60th or i'm sorry 60 to 80th orange is 40 to 60 yellow is 20 to 40 and green is under 20. so with that being said, look at all the course history. That's pretty decent. You know, like this I would say is good course history. And as we go through here, we're gonna see a bunch of good course history. A couple missed cuts here. I think that was his first time playing. Justin Rose has probably played here before, but I only, my course history goes back to 2013. I didn't see anything, you know, that would go further back of 2013. Justin Rose probably had good course history. I just didn't have it. Patrick Rogers, on the other hand, um, this was a good year for him, and especially at this tournament. I think he was leading it at one point in time. But other than that, again, good course history. Some golfers who don't have course history, um, John Rahm, C.T. Pan. I mean, you would never have gotten C.T. Pan, you know, like trying to predict him to do that well. Probably wouldn't have, but you could have gotten on some of these other guys for sure. Go to 2016. Again, we have good recent or good course history. A couple guys here, not so great, but for the majority, all of it's good. Uh, 2015 is probably going to be the last year we'll have course history. Um, again, decent course history, a good course history. One golfer here with a 73 that he obviously shot uh, in 2013. So one round of tournament or one round of, of course history for him. Either way, all of it's good. And if you were paying attention, you're going to see very similar things with last year. Um, 
2015 is interesting once we get to uh, lineup construction. 2015 is when the Waste Management Open was actually the tournament prior to this tournament. Every other year was uh, the American Express, which obviously was the Desert Classic at one time, the Humana Challenge at another time, but you can see the American Express was the tournament before, the week before this tournament, every single year, except for 2015. And 2015 shows different results as when we get into lineup construction. So I will also mention it there. Just want to mention it here so you guys can see it. But having a top 20 finish the year before, pretty big deal. Uh, and, and missed cuts is another one too. Like don't be afraid of missed cuts. You're going to see that with a lot of these. Top 20s, missed cuts. So. That's all I'm going to talk about with recent form. There really isn't anything else to talk about. Um, optimal lineup, 47,800. So that one, you want to leave some money on the table. I will actually, let's go through something real, really quickly, or really quickly. Uh, I So I started doing these spreadsheets, and I kind of started with the bucket system last year at this tournament. I think I was met, uh, monkeying around with it the uh, the tournament before the American Express, but here's where I actually you know started really putting down all the information that you see right now. So I have 2018 POA stats, overall POA stats, T to green, uh, recent form, and then the swing stats over here. This is leading into the tournament so this is from the start of the 2019 season until here so that this is leading into the tournament uh and which i think is really important to to distinguish because a lot of people just take snapshots of how winners do at these tournaments like the the, the their tournament so the four rounds of golf that they do here so if, if someone's going to talk about justin rose's success last year they're going to talk well he was good at shots gained T to green, uh, inside 150 yards, and then his putting was good. And then they're going to basically get you to subs subscribe to the fact that you want to be targeting golfers with those stats. That doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It's really weird that we have a lot of professionals out there that do it that way. It doesn't work that way in golf. We need lead up stats to look at. So here we go. Uh, just... Again, T to green looks good. Obviously the top two guys not, you know, wasn't one of those things that you really cared, but it's it's a it's a jumble. There isn't one stat to attach yourself to. Don't get don't get tied down to that stuff. I want you to to realize that. So this is 2019's DK page that I created last year as I was making lineups. Do not get yourself attached to the swing stats. And with that being said, we're going to get right into swing stats. So we'll go right to the 2020 uh, DK page uh, and start talking about the swing stats. Uh, we can go ahead and hide this information. Just talk about the swing stats. So I don't know what I had this sorted by. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure I don't have anything hidden. Doesn't look like I do. Um, let's go ahead and just go through these really quick. We're gonna go ahead and look at the T to green stats. Let's. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the blanks here, and that way we won't lose Rory when it comes to green and reg, uh, or Jordan. But anyways, T to green stats. Xander is at the top of T to green. At this tournament in the field i should say followed by tony finau hideki matsuyama emiliana grillo joel damon mark leishman colin murakawa uh cameron tringali harris english brendan Wu. i'm not going to talk i'm not going to go over everyone but xander's good play at the beginning of the year definitely catapulted him up a notable thing to, to talk about tony finau had really good td green stats at last week's tournament they actually dropped. I think he was at 3.2. Now he's at 2.4. That's going to happen. Like 3.2 is absurd. When this all like kind of evens out, we're going to see, I mean, Rory last year, Tita Green was always leading in the stat. Um, and he was at like 1.4, I think. And the nearest person was at like 
just hovering around one. I think, unless it was two. Maybe it was two shot. That's that's what it was. Uh, Rory, I think, was at like two point four, and the next nearest guy to him was like one point eight or one point six, something like that. So we'll see it 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 come back down a little bit, but. Um, yeah, Xander's been hitting the ball really well. So has Tony Finau. Both of those guys can't really putt to save their lives. Um, but obviously being as great at ball strikers as they are, uh, definitely. So what I would say here is instead of looking at all the golfers that are, you know, like how many guys can you get in a lineup here? You know, can't do anything like that. Obviously didn't probably didn't think you could. Uh, as long as I find somebody that's 7,000 or less, I could fit him and fit them into a lineup. Um, yeah, so obviously we could do something like that. Don't make this lineup. Don't do it. It's stupid. Don't look at these stats that way. Pick, you know, these should be what's a tiebreaker for you. Like if you like Xander or Tony, or I should say Xander or Hideki, and you're like, I don't know who to play, come here and look at the stats. And then choose from there. But do not make a lineup based off these stats. That's it's not smart. Don't do that. Uh, off the tee stats. I'll go through these also. Uh, no surprise here. Cameron Champ is at the top. Matthew Wolf. Brandon Wu. Which, oh gosh, we really haven't heard much of Brandon Wu. Uh, but he does pop up in these stats. And, um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll talk more about him later. Xander's up there. Johnny Vegas. Harris English. Harold Varner III. Sung Kang, Ryan Palmer, uh, Ricky Fowler, Jason Kokrak, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau. Um, again, I'm not going to go through everyone. But I went through a little bit more than I should have. Approach stats. I am also going to be looking at this. So Mark Leishman, Tony Finau, and Xander Shoffley. Like, just by stats-wise, they're probably the golfers that, you know, just shout out, play me, play me, play me. I'll tell you what. I guarantee you two of them will finish outside the top ten. Um, I know probably we're, or it's not really a hot take. I just don't think, I think one of these guys will do well. At least I don't think all three of them are going to do well. And I might eat my words later, but I just don't think, I mean, I, I have these sorted by buckets. I do like Tony Finau. Uh, I do like Mark Leishman. So I am probably going to pair these guys up together or do some kind of pairing like this. So I know what I just said. I'm going to I'm going to take it back a little bit. I do want to play these guys and a lot of it's going to be more based off of POA stats than it is going to be these swing stats. Uh so anyways, we'll go ahead and go back down the list. Kyle Stanley, Chesson Hadley, which I don't he had a good week last week. I'm not playing him this week. Colin Morikawa, really like him. Uh, I know a lot of people like him. This is actually a good time to play Colin Morikawa 8900. I I think he's one of the better values in in the top 20 golfers uh salary wise so definitely i think colin morikawa is a good play miliana grillo i mean the more i see it the more i like it tom hoagie jimmy walker russell knox i like russell um and then there's brandon Wu again around the green i think is actually a very important stat instead of okay so you can see xander's at the top Instead of me saying, hey, I like this stat, and you just see Xander at the top of everything, find someone like a Peter Uline, a Brant Snedeker, um, something like this, where their stats here don't look the greatest. They can improve on these stats. So if, if you know someone who's decent at T to green and they just haven't been showing it, you know, stat-wise, but they're around the green looks pretty good, I would definitely, I would take consideration of that. Like Keegan. Keegan's a perfect example. I might play Keegan in some some lineups. What I won't do is play Keegan and Xander together. They're in the same bucket combination. I'm not going to play them together. Um, I would just choose one or the other. But I, I do like that whole um, thought process there. I'd do this with probably more expensive golfers like Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed, perfect. Prime example of, of who to do this with. He's never really the straightest driver, but the around the green is something I... I'm going to look at, uh, especially at this tournament. So that's what I would look, I would think about, uh, even Ben Ann also, I would definitely look at around the green stats like that. I wouldn't create like a Superman such, you know, scenario with these two golfers saying, Oh, they're the top four, you know, they're top of the stats for these four 
categories. I want to do that. I'm not going to talk about putting. I don't think putting is all that. It doesn't matter that much. You're going to see a lot of the same golfers up here um, uh, week in and week out. So I'm not going to think too much about putting. Green and reg. Now we can scroll up because we're going to see uh, more golfers since Rory and a couple of the other guys are now in this, this stat. Um, I do like seeing this because I like to compare this with uh, birdie or better typically. You know, Xander, great green and reg with birdie or better percentage. Definitely like that, especially with someone who doesn't putt that well. Um, I'm, I do like seeing that information. Same here with Mr. Woodland. Um, these are the stats that I like to pair up with green and reg. But I wouldn't also mind green and reg with T to green or off the T stats. I mean, they're all going to work hand in hand, basically. So you might be able to find some golfers here that have... Like Scotty Sheffer, that looks good. Um, Joaquin Neiman, that looks good. Uh, maybe not so much the better you're better, but still. Definitely things to look at for that. So I'm not really going to talk any more about the swing stats. We'll go ahead and get into the POA stats because I think that's going to matter quite a bit this week. Um, I'll just go ahead and hide this stuff. Uh, scroll over a little bit so we don't get too confused with over here. So I didn't include 2020 POA stats or 2019 POA stats because I like to use that as kind of a recent form metric for grass stats. Uh, and the last tournament we played that was on POA was the Safeway Open. And that was 12 weeks ago, something like that. Uh, therefore, I'm just not going not gonna to include it. But POA stats, definitely, in my opinion, important. Let's go ahead and get back some of our guys. Forgot to do that. Um, there we go. So what we're going to do, sort by overall POA stats. We're going to see Harry Higgs at the top here. A 23rd position, but he's only played one POA event. Uh, what I am going to do is just remove, I mean, here's Brandon Wu again. You obviously had heard of him uh, earlier from the swing stats. That's probably because the one tournament he's played that had POA was a Safeway Open. Not a difficult tournament to do well in especially if you're kind of a new guy which i'm guessing he's a rookie again i don't know much about brandon Wu. But what i'm going to do is get rid of uh one two and three events and just go off of this for the next two uh categories we talk about rory McIlroy leads the way 26.10 is his average finishing position on poa greens i uh, like all of this these are your high priced guys right here and if there's one person that probably leaps up above the other guys, it's going to be Jason Day because he's at 9,000. Everyone else is nearly 10,000 and above. Um, Hideki would be in my next my next one that I would I would look at. I mean, when we look, when you guys, um, okay, if we were looking at the 2019 DK page, you would have seen. Um, POA stats looked pretty good. Most of them were yellow. And I guess if we were to uh, sort this and then come back and look at the finishing position, you're going to see a lot of golfers who did really well. You know, like look at all this. That's ridiculous. Minus these top two guys and Jordan Spieth, like I know I don't have the events here, but do you know Jim Nouse or Jim Knaus? depending on where he's from. That's how you pronounce those names, that name. Chase Wright. Um, I, I've heard of Chase Wright before. I can tell you he's he's a young guy um, and he probably only played one POA event. That's why his, his event looked that good, or his, his POA events looked that good. But here you go. Here's your bulk right here. Again, these guys, highly priced. Adam Scott had the best overall POA leading into this tournament, and he was $7,500. Okay, so if we go back, go to the 20K or 2020 DK page, um, we really don't see a good value because I think DraftKings is becoming a bit more savvy to this type of thing. Bubba Watson might be your best bet. Uh, Keegan, also, I like that. And really, here, here are your value plays. Phil... 
I would not play Steve Stricker. I just don't think the age with how long this course is is going to do that well. Um, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that because I, I really, I'm not going to get too far into like getting into these orange uh, values, 40 to 60 and above. Um, this might be a key range if, if you were thinking that. And, and maybe it fluctuates. Maybe now we look at someone in the 8K range, like low 8s. So Snedeker might be that person, like... So last year it was obviously Adam Scott, who had been struggling for the longest time with his putting and stuff like that, started turning it on right about now. Uh, had a second place here, and I think he goes. He went to the Honda a few weeks after, did well there. Um, anyways, who is that golfer out of these guys? Like, is it out of these guys? Maybe it's Jordan Spieth. Honestly, this could be a good comeback for Jordan. I'll be playing him. Uh, I don't know how much, but I definitely will be playing them. But yeah, I would definitely target guys in in this range. Maybe four or five golfers. I don't think that's crazy at all. I mean, you got three. You had you had seven golfers inside the top twenty. You had six golfers inside the top five. Okay, hold on. Let's 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 rephrase this. Out of the top eight, oh, hold on. Out of the top 10 golfers, seven of them finished inside the top 13. Or, okay. Out of the top 10 POA golfers, there we go, seven of them finished inside the top 13. In fact, six of them finished inside the top five. So, what that says, 60% of golfers inside the top 10 of POA stats. Finish inside the top five. And honestly, one, two, three. So we're missing fourth place. That's it. We go ahead and, and come back here and sort this out. Oh, we're missing uh, Taylor Gooch. Minus him, nothing but really good POA stats. So... It's definitely worth looking into. POA, so the reason why we look at POA, it's a bumpy grass. Like you, you, have to, you have to know how to play through it. You have to look at breaks differently. They won't break. Oh, well, they'll break how you... Th the topography of the green is what you see. The, other, the thing you don't see is all the little knolls that are going to be like the small, small knolls. And, and they're probably not knolls you know, per se, but they're going to be little bunches of grass that are all over the green that grow at different rates than the rest of the grass that are going to bump the ball a little off line here and there. Golfers are going to have to know how to put on these greens. So it's no surprise to me, especially at Tory. Tory is notable. Look at Tiger Woods finishing putt on the 18th hole to get into a playoff for Rocco during the U S open. That ball was bumping all over the place. He rammed that ball in the hole. He had like, what, a 12-footer, some 8 to 12, something in there. And he didn't play it outside the hole because he knew he couldn't. That ball almost squirted outside of the hole because of all the bumps it took. So it takes that kind of knowledge of how to play on these greens. And it's going to fluctuate. Um, like, throughout the day, the greens are going to fluctuate. And it's up to the guys who have that, that knowledge of that to play well, I'm going to pick someone who has great POA stats. Just like I, there's no reason not to. Um, let's go ahead and look in the top 10% POA. Rory, Jason Day. I mean, maybe now you, you get on Joaquin Neiman or Jordan Spieth because he kind of creeps up uh, looking better. Um, I'll tell you one thing. These three, these four golfers, Three of them are going to finish inside the top 10. Just have a really good feeling. And when we do lineup construction, we'll talk about that. Because if it's these three golfers right here, can't fit them all three in your lineup. I mean, it would be ridiculous. It would be really difficult. We'll pair them up with Graham Dillette, maybe. 6,000, 67, Bill Haas. I don't even have enough. I have $4,100 left. So um, it that's impossible, putting those three gol golfers together. Um, so we might have to, you know, 
deal with that, just sacrifice that fact, and so be it. We'll we'll continue with with lineup construction. Um, and actually, that's I think that's what we got next, right? Got to remember, yeah. Went through swing stats, grass stats. Now we're on lineup construction. Cool. So I kind of looked at this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead sort this by salary. Uh, 35 minutes in. That's what I figured as much. That's what I figured as much. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, I've got the lineup construction page up of right now. So we'll go. We'll flick through the two and construct some lineups. So what I have been experimenting the last two weeks is trying to come up with some kind of bucket combination, which I think I'm just going to name this BC for bucket combination. Um, and trying to figure out the likelihood they're going to finish inside the top 10, as well as the one thing I didn't notice last week is the groups that the, these buckets were in. I'm going to go ahead and go to the notes page. I do this every single week, or I pretty much do it every single week. Um, and I just want to recap it for just new listeners. What I do, I go and look every single year, 2019, I look to see what the, the year before, the last year finishing position was. So obviously Justin Rose was eighth the year before, uh, in 2018. If we come back or if we come down and look for Justin Rose, there's, there he is. He had eighth place the year before. So in 2019, I marked that for with an eight. And obviously I, I put in formulas and figure that stuff out that way. Uh, but that is, I keep track of this because I think this is important information. If anything, this gives golfers confidence coming back to a place that they've, they've golfed at before. Um, you know, a missed cut maybe just gives them a little bit motivation. Like I knew what I did wrong. I missed the cut by just a couple strokes. If it wasn't for this, this, and this, I'll, you know, I could have been here. And then the next tournament or the next year's tournament, they come back to it and they're like, all right, I know the mistakes I made last year, not going to make them this year. And therefore, you know, you find yourself inside the top 10. It doesn't happen for everyone. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this is a great way to track data, uh, especially the week before. So this is my last week. This is where I would put the data from the week before is my last week um, data. And obviously last year data is this. What I end up doing is I just count the frequency of how often they fall into these groups over here. One to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, whatever, you know, you get the gist. Uh, and I, I populate them all the way through 2014 for last year, all the way through 2013 for last week. And then I do a count over here. And from that count, I rank them. So obviously your last year one rank, which that's how I, I say this, last year one are golfers who finished the year before in top 20. It just, there's a high count of those every single year. That is a definite um, indicator for success at this tournament. So I will be looking at that. Likewise, I like to do that for uh, the last week score. And the number one stat for that would be not playing the week before. And that's no surprise here at Farmers because a lot of these, a lot of these elite golfers, this is their first tournament of the season, um, the PGA season that is. Ah, uh, that's not true. It's of the calendar year because usually the HSBC is where a lot of good golfers go. Also, for that World Golf ranking points or just the World Golf Championships. Um, what I do though is I grab the ranking from the top ten. It just gives me a more consistent number. Um, if you can tell, like you have a lot of numbers that are really close to each other. If we come down here, those numbers are going to be a little bit further away. So that way I can determine what really is the ranking. You know, six, that still stays the lower end. Um, this actually moved up. So that's what I look at. I also look at the frequency, like how often does this happen? I'm trying to avoid looking for zeros, like finding zeros in here. So the last year ones, the the lowest amount of golfers that finished inside the top 20, um, I'm sorry, the top 10 at a tournament that had a top 20 finish the year before was, was three golfers. So 
this tells you a little bit. This is top 10 finishing positions. This is top five. Top five has, has one in every single one of them. Uh, highest was three. The lowest was one just once. Most of them are twos and threes. So that's obviously something we want, we're going to want to focus on. Now, what, I, what I'll do then is I'll look at all the ones, you know, clear out this and just put all the ones, the last year ones. There's not a lot. There are 22 golfers that are last year ones. But I, I go a little bit further than that. Uh, and then I will basically populate all of the combinations here for top 10. And then from this, I go through and believe it or not, this is what I do. This is why it takes a little a bit longer to get these videos out. I look at all the combinations. All of them. So one ones to six sixes. I look at every single one. And you see a one one in the top five every single year. You see a one one constantly. Um in all of these tournaments. So then what I'll do down here is here's my count of what each combination is. And I just look to see what's a common occurrence. Obviously sixes, we don't see a lot of. Uh, the six combinations, not so much. We see one golfer who's a 6-2. Ricky Fowler's a 6-2 this week. I mean, he he's, could be that golfer that makes it a another one. You know, like he's that good. And there are only like three golfers that are 6-2s, I think. So it's it's... You know it's plausible but it just gives me less confidence to play him and you can see that as we move obviously closer to one i mean this is kind of this is crazy here to see all of these last year ones with the last week in red last week we saw a bunch of yellows and oranges which looked more like this to go with a green green that was actually a three one so it was like flip-flopped basically um but yeah i'll look at all these combinations and just see how many times did this happen? You know, out of the last six years, how many time, how many times did these these combinations finish inside the top ten? So that's what you got a number here for five out of six, zero to six. I didn't find any two twos that you know finished inside the top ten. You know, within this combination. All right. So you got you got you guys got all that. When we go to the the twenty twenty DK page, let's go ahead and and filter out and get those one ones. We've seen a hundred percent of them over the last six years inside the top 10. Uh, we've seen several actually inside the top 10. Like obviously we've seen a bunch in the top five. You know, I'll go ahead and, and highlight all that again. But then there's two more in 2014, uh, two more in 2016, two more in 2017, uh, three more in 2018, and three more in 2019. So one ones dominate this tournament. Uh, just for the, the sheer fact that they find the top 10 more than any other combination whatsoever. Uh, and again, they're in the top five every single year as well. Well, look at all the one ones. Lowest price, 6,800 Sun King. Followed by 73, Matt Jones, 74, Joel Damon, and then it goes 8,000 and above. Now, my, my strategy here... I'm going to pick three golfers that I like a lot. I like Justin Rose quite a bit. So I'm going to copy Justin Rose, throw him here. Um, I am going to take John Rahm. He's another favorite golfer of mine. I'm actually going to put him right next to Justin Rose. And then the next one that I like a lot is going to be Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, obviously, these three golfers minus, well, these two golfers, you're going to hear a lot. Obviously, that leaves me with 61. I'm not going to create that many. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not putting these guys together. Instead, what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you what this will look like um, really quickly. Yeah, I'll show you right now. Uh, we'll go to this page over here. So what I'm gonna do is basically grab, let's say all of these golfers. 34, about 29. So I'll grab all these golfers, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw them underneath these guys. I know if you guys are looking at this, you're like, well, you can't play these guys together. I, uh, I understand that. What's going to happen, though, what I want you guys to see is say, if I made 30 lineups, I'm going to right click in Google Sheets. This is great. And randomize that range. Now, here's Justin Rose right here. Same thing is going to apply. But what I can do is do this to all of them. And they only 
it'll only randomize in the column. These will not cross whatsoever. So I can randomize like that. Um, and I'm gonna randomize again. I wonder if they all change together. Oh, they do. That's funny. Okay. Uh, either way, so I'm gonna randomize. So we got Justin Rose there, Hideki Matsuyama there, uh, and John Rom down there. So I'm gonna take that approach, but what I'm going to do is determine how much I wanna play of these guys. I am making 70 lineups. So go ahead and, and pick out the calculator here. So I'm creating 70 lineups. If we've seen one ones in 100% of these lineups, that means I'm playing on a one one in 100% of these lineups. I I last year what or last week what I did. I actually, um, I had said if you didn't feel confident in a in a in a particular bucket combination, what you should do is basically this number. Um, Go back to this notes thing here. So let's say we don't think six to six uh, is gonna happen. We think six out of seven is gonna happen. If six out of seven happens, go ahead and get in the calculator. Six divided by seven, 85. So this is the percentage that I would play a one one in. That was my kind of conservative yet aggressive approach. Now you could say a one one is not gonna make the top 10. Therefore, you don't play a 1-1. One, one. You play them in 0% of your lineups. But this is kind of your, your way to safeguard. So I'd say play them in, um, you know, play a 1-1 one, one at the very least. Your minimum, 85%. Your maximum, 100%. That's what I would go. This is how I would go ahead and create lineups. Um, I think it's a, a very interesting way of doing it. It also safeguards yourself a little bit from you know going overboard with creating lineups uh, with the same golfers or even like the same groups of golfers. But what I'm going to do, what I'm gonna show you is, let's go ahead and get rid of that. I told you I'm gonna play 100%. So I'm going max. 100% of a 1-1, one -one. not of a golfer, but of, of the combination 1-1. One -one. Of that, I want to play Justin Rose in 40% of my lineups. So obviously times 0.4, that gives me 40%, 28 lineups. I'm gonna go ahead, click this down. I'm gonna look at my count. That's actually right below. You can't see it because I'm in the way. Uh, that's 20, six, so 28 lineups. Um, John Rom. I don't mind playing them nearly the same, but I'm gonna play them a little bit under 40%. So what I will do is do something like, I'll go four less. And I like Hideki just as much as Justin Rose, so 40%. So why I put them next to each other is simply this. These are my highest owned guys. I want these guys in all of my lineups. I showed you that randomization thing earlier. So what I'm gonna do is fill golfers down here. I'm gonna fill golfers over here. I'm not gonna care about the average remaining position just yet. Um, but if I wanted to do something like this and say I wanted uh, Jordan Spieth in my lineups, I'll go ahead and kind of put them here um, and kind of scroll down to that. So basically this is what I'm gonna do. Out of my 70 lineups, we're gonna go ahead, randomize the range like this. So you can see how it adds a little bit of gaps here. If I go ahead and do that here as well um, and randomize the range, we're gonna see a few more gaps. Uh, of course, we're gonna have some that are paired together, that's fine. Uh, if you don't like that, that's also fine. But basically, what this is gonna show you is now it mixes it up. It gives me a little bit more um, openness to uh, basically, or I shouldn't say openness, but freedom to pair a lot of these guys together. And I get to play some of these guys together. Like that's the other thing I like about it. I I want to avoid having three golfers together so I can come through and cherry pick this stuff. Uh, and like this right here, I don't quite like, so I'll just throw that there. 
um, like even John Rom, I'll throw them down here. I don't want to have you know that much together. And there we go. That's how we get we avoid that. And then we also don't have to really worry about um, duplicate. You know, having Justin Rose with Justin Rose over here or Hideki Matsuyama. Although there are ways to to go over that and figure that out. But this is how I'm going to do that. That way I get you know as much as possible out of these. And look, some of these don't actually have a 1-1 one, one in them, at least not for the golfers that I have. Um, and we can fill in 1-1s one, there. So that is how I am going to create lineups. Um, some things that I wanted to go over to talk about. Um, I did want to talk about Tiger Woods. So Tiger Woods is in this 1-1 one, one range. Tiger Woods said that he hadn't picked up a club since the President's Cup until January 4th. And he doesn't even play that much. He doesn't practice that much. I don't know how much that's smoke. I don't know, you know, why he talks, you know, whatever. But basically, um, he, I, I don't trust him is what I'm getting at. The fact that this is going to be a little colder weather, um, you're going to hear this, this narrative all, the all over the place. I just don't trust that. I don't think he's looked good coming out on his first tournament. So I'm not going to play a lot of him. I'll play some, but not a lot. Um, the other golfer I wanted to talk about. Okay. So before we get there, um, the one ones, obviously it's a bucket group that I like the next favorite group that I like, uh, are the three ones. So one thing I failed to do last week, uh, and I think I already touched on it is look at the groups. So like three, one, there's quite a bit. I mean, there are 16 golfers in this group. If we look at the top three golfers, like those guys quite a bit, the rest of these guys, you know, don't really know all that much about them. So I'm not going to worry too much. I don't know why some of these, oh, I do know why. So these shouldn't be 100%. Crazy that this says 100%. They were late ads, and I I didn't put the right, the, the right number next to them to begin with. Um, anyways. So, you know, 50%, I'm actually going to play the north side of that. I'm going to play 57% of three ones in my lineups. And it's probably going to be heavily with Colin Morikawa. So what this is, what that's going to look like is it's going to be 70 times 0.57. So I'm going to play a three one in 40% of my lineups. Of those 40% of my lineups, um, so actually it was like, 40 we'll go ahead it's not 40 percent it's 40 lineups so out of 40 lineups i'm gonna play colin morikawa in 50 percent of those so 20 lineups so i'm gonna put colin morikawa in 20 of my lineups i'm gonna do the randomization thing once again uh and that's how i you know that's what i like to look at this and the combinations here uh it's something i i enjoy doing uh for that i didn't really see another bucket combination that i cared about but if I were to tell you like a 2-1 is 83%, it makes 83% of um, top 10s. We look at all the golfers here. Do we, do we trust a lot of these golfers? I mean, there's actually better golfers in this than there were last week when I was going through buck combinations and, and kind of giving my stamp of approval. I'm gonna actually go the low end of 83%. So what that means is Again, 83% is six out of seven. So six divided by seven, you're gonna get your 83% or 85. Sorry, this should be 85. Oh, no, 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 no. We have only played um, six tournaments so far. So 83%. So obviously you saw the north end, that would be 85%, it's only going up two. But the, the tail end of that would be five divided by seven, 71%. I don't think I'm gonna play 71% of lineups with a 2-1 with this, this player pool. Uh, and that's a great distinction to make because I did this blindly last week. And it was because I wasn't really looking at the player pool. It's not gonna be 70%, but it's also not gonna be 0%. It's gonna be somewhere in between. Um, I, know, I might just cut that 70% in half, play it 35%. Maybe that's how I, I think about doing this. Again, this is kind of a trial run, just trying to figure out what works best, but that is kind of what my, my thought process is on it. Um, so yeah, I am gonna think 
about that or think about this that way um so yeah that's the, those are the two ones um i did want to go over one group oh, well i mean we can look at the four ones 16 percent. so the north end of that i think is i mean i had my numbers let me look at it okay so 16 percent moves up to 28 percent if a 4-1 finds its way inside the top 10 that would be over the last seven seven years obviously um but for this tournament obviously it'd be 100 percent right if a 4-1 finds itself inside the top 10 it's 100 percent uh in 2020 that a 4-1 made the top 10 obviously uh it's brain dead analysis but again if you want to take the conservative route play these guys in 28 percent of your lineups I might go a little bit more. You know, I, I, I like Jordan Spieth a lot, and really Ke or Xander is no slouch, and Keegan's a good a good play at 7,300. You look at all these POA stats over here, you know, this is not a very good indication of, of you know, the, the, the potential here. So I did want to mention that. Keep that in mind when you're also doing this stuff. It's not perfect. But this is just to give you a little caution. You know, I bet I will play either Jordan or Xander. Um, gosh, maybe combined 50% of my lineups. So that's going to be way over this number. And then I'm going to throw some Keegan in there. And I'm going to put these, I'm not going to pair any of these guys up with each other at all. This is just their own column. They'll be in that in one column. Uh, I might actually just put them underneath column one and just keep them there. Uh, that wouldn't be fair because I have all those golfers together. So either way, it's going to be something similar to that. Uh, and then the other one that I want to talk about. So Ricky Fowler, I said something in the last video that was not correct. Where is Ricky? Thought he was a four. Oh, he's a six two. That's right. Because he didn't do the greatest last year. Throw six two up there. So there's Ricky Fowler. Six two. Not a very good percentage. Ricky Fowler also had a swing change. If you guys didn't know that. Went through a couple swing changes. So something to take into account. Um I had said that it was somewhere between like um the President's Cup and last year or last week's tournament that's not that wasn't true because he did play at uh the tournament of champions so he'd been working on a swing change and he finished decent at tournament tournament of champions uh and he was playing well at uh the the american express so it's worth mentioning at ninety seven hundred dollars when he's playing kind of high pressure situation he's also the tournament host i think or if he's not the host he is a uh, spokesperson for farmers, so he might actually have some tournament obligations that he has to get through. That might be enough of a distraction that kind of gets him off of his game. So definitely worth thinking about that. Um, I know I'll be thinking about it. I think that's all I have to talk about. Um, I hope you guys understood what I was going to do with lineup construction um you know like obviously jordan yeah i did say i was going to play him in quite a bit of lineup so basically what that would look like oops over here come back up here so if, i'll play xander in like sure 12. so this is the column dedicated just to the four ones because i do not want to play xander and jordan together uh, maybe i'll do it in one lineup but i'm going to randomize it again like this it leaves a couple blanks um i don't know how these guys got back together so yeah it's gonna look something like that and i'll go through comb what's left of some of these and and determine if that's doable or not like 6500 that might be a, a stretch 6600 will be a stretch um but it, it's doable for sure uh and i only have to fill in three more lineups or three more um positions i should say um so yeah that's how that's gonna look and i'll go through all the other bucket combinations and and go through that but i'm gonna leave you here 
it's only been an hour uh, which is remarkable considering that I usually like to talk about other stuff um, but yeah I don't have anything else to talk about hopefully you guys got to see enough information look at these bucket groups um, and determine you know if you want to play them Sung Jae doesn't look good Fowler you know not so so much Joaquin Neiman was at zero same with Brant Snedeker haven't seen six ones inside the top 10 in the last six years um, Jason Kokrak Russell Knox you know those are things to consider I mean Kokrak didn't look the greatest but still has a potential to get inside the top 10 this this basically I would have written him off now I see this maybe not so much you know there is a possibility maybe play him in a couple lineups um, yeah Sebastian Munoz, 0%. Nick Watney, Rory Sabatini, 0%. Um, Tom Hoagie, uh, 0%. Yeah, a lot of these guys, like, just, you know, consider. Um, probably the most notables here is going to be Tony, Xander, Ricky, Sungjae, Joaquin, and Brant Snedeker. That's what the bucket combination, their percentages show me. These guys have a, a lower likelihood of finding the top 10. Um, it's not that they can't be mold breakers. Like they can, they can sure, it sure as hell get inside the top ten. They're good enough golfers to do so. So definitely consider that uh, when you're constructing your lineups. Oh, Matthew Wolf, another guy here, zero percent. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Again, if you guys want to see two videos where I split up lineup construction with just the regular video, let me know. Um, I'd like to hear your feedback. Other than that, good luck this week. Hope you guys make a lot of money. All right, see ya.